In every garden, there are uninvited guests. Some spread like wildfire and smother your prized vegetables. Others lie low, quietly working in ways most gardeners overlook. Among them is one misunderstood plant that might just be the unsung hero of your soil's recovery. It's the kind of weed most people yank without a second thought, but if you knew what it was really doing beneath the surface, you might think twice. So before you reach for the trowel, let's talk about the one weed that could be healing your soil right under your nose, red clover. Red clover often gets dismissed as just another nuisance in the lawn or veggie bed, but this so-called weed is one of nature's most effective soil doctors. Red clover is a legume, a plant family known for a unique superpower, fixing nitrogen from the air and storing it in the soil. Unlike synthetic fertilizers that can disrupt soil microbiology, red clover partners with beneficial bacteria in the soil to naturally enrich it. These bacteria, called rhizobia, form nodules on the clover's roots and convert atmospheric nitrogen into forms your plants can actually use. This process doesn't just feed the clover, it lays the foundation for healthier soil across your entire garden. But red clover doesn't stop at nitrogen. Its deep tap roots dive into compacted or depleted soil, helping to break it up and improve its structure. This makes it especially valuable in urban and backyard gardens where years of foot traffic, mowing, or construction have turned the ground into a lifeless slab. Over time, red clover's root system creates natural channels for air and water, improving drainage while also increasing the soil's ability to hold moisture during dry spells. These benefits come without any backbreaking digging or expensive amendments, just by letting the plant do what it's built to do. What makes red clover even more remarkable is the way it supports the microbial life in your soil. Healthy soil is alive. It teems with bacteria, fungi, protozoa, and insects, all playing roles in breaking down organic matter, cycling nutrients, and building structure. Red clover feeds this living community in multiple ways. Its roots release sugars and organic acids that serve as food for microbes. When the plant eventually dies back or is cut, its biomass becomes a rich source of organic matter that worms and microbes feast on. This continual cycling of nutrients creates a virtuous loop of fertility and resilience. If you're starting seeds or, you know, getting beds ready for the season, red clover can actually serve as a living cover crop or green manure in your rotation. While it's not usually the medium for direct seed starting, its role in supporting seed starting beds really can't be overstated. Sow red clover in an unused bed in fall or, uh, early spring. Let it grow for a bit, then cut it back just before it flowers. You can lay the clippings down as mulch or till them lightly into the top few inches of soil. After a few weeks, the breakdown process will release nitrogen and organic matter into the soil, creating a prime environment for starting seeds of heavy feeders like tomatoes, peppers, or corn. Even your leafy greens will thank you for it. Another honestly overlooked advantage of red clover is how it protects soil from erosion and nutrient leaching. Bare soil is vulnerable. Every time it rains or the wind picks up, valuable topsoil and nutrients are carried away. Red clover forms a dense mat that shields the surface while holding nutrients in place. This is especially helpful in raised beds and containers, where soil loss can happen faster just because of the limited volume. Whether you're growing in urban containers, backyard beds, or community plots, Keeping something green in the soil year-round is key, and red clover fits that role perfectly. Now, a word of caution timing and placement matter. Red clover is vigorous, and while it's not aggressive like bindweed or Bermuda grass, you don't want it crowding out tender seedlings or spreading into beds where it's not welcome. Use it strategically. Interplant it in off-season beds or use it as a border in pathways. In perennial beds, you can trim it regularly to keep it from overwhelming slower-growing herbs or flowers. Treat it not as a weed, but as a tool, and your soil will begin to reflect that wisdom. Experienced gardeners often come to learn that nature rarely makes mistakes. Plants that thrive in difficult conditions often do so for a reason. Red clover's presence in your yard or garden might not be accidental. It could be responding to nutrient imbalances, compacted soil, or depleted microbiology. Rather than seeing it as a problem, view it as a signal and an opportunity. It's nature's way of healing what's broken, one root at a time. 
So the next time you spot that flush of green with its soft trifoliate leaves and tiny purplish blooms, pause before pulling. Ask yourself if it's doing more good than harm. Because while most weeds are takers, this one's a giver, a quiet fixer. And for gardeners who know its secret, red clover is not an enemy, but an ally. If this guide opened your eyes to the hidden heroes in your garden, share it with a fellow gardener who needs to know. Don't forget to subscribe to Hydrohaven for more eye-opening tips, deep-dive soil guides, and practical solutions for turning any patch of dirt into living, thriving earth. Your garden will thank you, and so will we.